What's up guys? So today I'm going to be filming part 6 to my vinyl collection. I'm going to have a few more vinyls in this video than I normally do. So just be patient with me, sit back, relax, and uh, yeah, let's just get, get to it. First up, I have Tickets to My Downfall by Machine Gun Kelly. I really loved this project. I just love how MGK switched genres and was just dirty in pop punk. Like, I honestly think he's a better pop punk artist than he is a hip hop artist. I really enjoyed uh, Lace Up, I think it's called, and General Admission from MGK, but since then his music just kind of got boring and really pop, like pop hip-hop. I didn't really follow him too much, but then when he dropped this, I immediately gravitated towards it because it reminds me of like middle school when I was like running around with Osiris's on through Great Adventure, like I don't know if anyone else could relate to that, but I just I have such like nostalgic vibes when I put this on. It reminds me of Blink-182, boys like girls like that whole era of just pop punk that was huge when i was like a kid and he just nails it like he really like rebirthed pop punk with this and it's kind of sick i know that uh travis barker worked with this worked on this project with him a lot um i think he produced the whole thing actually and yeah there's just so many good songs and i already have great memories to these songs for example like kiss kiss is so good probably my favorite song off of this this project then we have uh, Drunk Face, Bloody Valentine, uh, Concert for Aliens, like My Ex's Best Friend, the song with, um, what's the song with Halsey? Forget Me Too. All just really good songs on this thing. And yeah, he just, he rebirthed his career and just changed it up. And I really respect him for that, like for having the balls to go and do that. And it's a pretty cool album cover. I like the one that he posted on Apple Music instead, but something happened where they couldn't clear this for Apple Music, so they ended up um, having different covers. But yeah, I believe if you like open this up, it's like he's falling downwards, which is really cool. And then the inside gatefold is nice. Um, very 2000s. But yeah, man, good project from MGK, I'm proud of him. Glad he was able to switch it up. It's just on standard black, I'm not gonna pull it out. Next up, we have a true classic, and that is Take Care by Drake. Where do I even start with this thing? I mean, I constantly go back and forth between Nothing Was The Same and Take Care as being Drake's best albums. Both of them hit in different times of life, but Take Care really changed hip hop in the sense of, um, kind of like that, Drake kind of, I don't know what the word is. What is the word? I don't know, Drake was kind of like the pioneer to like singing and rapping um, after this album. Like he just blended rap and singing and vocals so well on this. And he really was able to express himself emotionally like no other rapper really has done before. Lowered his walls and he just released such a vulnerable album. And it's really important. I think like so many artists nowadays are influenced by this project and there's just no misses on it. It's flawless and it really hits when you're like driving at night and when you're like a little sad breakups, you know, like they're just so many good, good songs on this thing. For example, we got Over My Dead Body. We got Crew Love. Oh my God. Drake in the Weekend. Kill that. We got Headlines, Shot For Me. That's side one, bro. Side two is Take Care, Marvin's Room, Underground Kings, We'll Be Fine. Like, Name a bad song on this thing. Make me proud, Lord knows, cameras, doing it wrong. Oh my God, doing it wrong is so good. The Real Her is fantastic. Um, like Andre 3000 goes in on that. And then you have that interlude with uh, Kendrick Lamar. Like, bro, what? Then you have Look What You've Done, probably one of the best Drake songs of all time. You have uh, Hell Yeah, F and Right. You have Practice, The Ride. Like, dude, this is, ridiculous like if you don't have this like i don't want to talk to you honestly like this thing is crazy and yeah it has a gatefold uh drake smoke and a cubano we love that and yeah it just comes on standard black so i won't show you that but my favorite songs off of it are personally um shot for me headlines crew love marvin's room underground kings um, doing it wrong the real her and look what you've done. Those are all my favorites, but the whole thing is crazy Like I said And I don't know if Drake will be able to get back into this form with certified lover boy boy But I hope that that he's able to next up we have um, 
somebody who I got into recently more because he passed away and that is um, MF Doom. I really, I listened to Mad Villainy and really liked that album before his passing, but I have to be honest and say that I didn't really know much more of his, his music after his pass, before his passing, I should say. But after he passed, like I just did a deep dive into his discography and I've become a huge fan of his. Um, I don't think there's any shame in saying that too. Like, it's cool, like, yeah, if someone dies, it'll, bring them a lot more fans than they normally would have but i don't see that as a bad thing it's kind of just normal people pay attention more i've been listening to his music every day since his passing and this project right here stood out to me um it's his first project as mf doom and it's just so good this is operation doomsday if you guys haven't listened to this i highly suggest you go do that he produced the whole thing and it's just amazing it's his brother had passed away and he can't, he kind of didn't do rap for a long time and he came back as uh, MF Doom, as Metal Face Doom, as the villain. And he was just going for blood, but also dealing with some crazy things in life that he just hashes out on this record. Um, like Doomsday is an amazing song. Rhymes Like Dimes is one of the best Doom songs I've heard. Red and Gold, uh, Greenbacks, Operation Greenbacks is my favorite song off of this. Gastrols, uh, the question marks about his brother. And it's just a really, really nasty album like his flow is disgusting he's so effortless he just cruises over the beat and it takes a long time to figure out what he's saying and what he's rhyming but when you when you break it down and go on like genius or something you're like holy crap this man's crazy but yeah this is the back of the record right here it says like rest in peace to his brother right there that's him and his brother and yeah i just love the artwork on this too like so sick and yeah, I highly suggest you get into it. And the inside we have some more stuff. So it's just a black vinyl. So the vinyl is just black and it says uh, MF Doom. It's like upside down, I don't know which way, but it says MF Doom, whatever. And then another thing that's really cool about this project, or this vinyl, I should say, is, hold on one second. Get on in there. Another thing that's sick, if I could ever get it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Alright. I'm gonna ruin my vinyl right now, trying to get this out. Alright, we're just gonna take the vinyl out with it. So this came with a really sick poster. So on January 1999, um, Operation Doomsday occurred, and I'm glad that I picked this up. It's hard to find Doom records right now since he passed. Uh, but I got this off of Get Get On Down Records, I believe. So shout out to them for repressing this. And I have um, I have uh, Mad Villainy and the Mmm Food or however you say it album coming in the mail. Next up, we have another classic. We got the Eminem Show. This is such an important album to me because this is what introduced me to rap music. I was like eight years old when I first heard Eminem. I knew like his Slim Shady songs before this, but this was the first Eminem project when I was young that I really listened to all the way through and just fell in love with. This thing means a lot to me. I wouldn't really be into rap music without this. And um, I don't care what people say about Eminem, he's a goat. Um, if you grew up in the time period that I did, like if you're a 90s kid, like you know that Eminem's a goat because you, you witnessed it firsthand. Nobody was competing with this man and he has changed rap forever. So even though his stuff isn't that great anymore, his first couple albums, man, solidifies him as a goat. But anyways, yeah, incredible album. I just love how he goes from like Slim Shady to like Marshall Mathers on this project. He kind of shows his real self on this a lot, way more than he used to. He was more of like this comic, like comedian, rapper, like kind of just throwing shots at everybody before this project, kind of just like in your face with all his other albums, but this was really like personal. And I just, I think this is where Eminem really hit his like best point in his career. Songs like uh, Cleaning Out My Closet about his mom and the abusive relationship that they had and how he just wants to leave. And the way he just like talks about his mom on that is like brutal. Like it's terrible, but like so sick that he's able to express himself that clearly and honestly on track. Um, Square Dance is also really good. Without Me is classic. 
my favorite Eminem song of all time is on this Sing for the Moment. It is iconic, man. I used to bump that during so many hard times in my life, still do to this day. Um, that song's changed my life. If I literally, if somebody came up to me right now and was like, you have five songs to pick before you die, what are the five songs? Sing for the Moment will be in that top five. Like, I'm not even kidding. That's how much I love that song. So, yeah. For that alone, I would buy this final. But yeah, Till I Collapse is also crazy. And yeah, I just love it, man. There's not much to the packaging. Um, the pressing's not even that great, honestly. It doesn't like play that well. But yeah, you got this little fold out here. You got some pictures of Eminem. And then you have this side. But if you haven't listened to this and you're one of those Eminem haters, go back and listen. It might not even impress you because of the time period, like music's changed a lot. But this thing's great and I'm, I'm really glad I own this and it's really important to me. Next up, on the topic of Eminem, um, he released, I believe, Curtain Calls after that album. And I like a lot of songs off of that album as well, but I just never picked it up. I don't know why, I probably will one day. But my favorite song off of Curtain Calls is uh, When I'm Gone. And I was digging through my local record store and I found the 12 inch single for When I'm Gone. And I'm like, man, that's the only song I really, really care about on that album. And um, so I picked this up for a buck. So it's a steal. It has like a clean version, an album version, an instrumental version, an acapella version. This song is crazy. It's about leaving his daughter and going on tours and kind of leaving his family life uh, at home when his daughter is begging for him to stay. And it's just this crazy like look back on his life because at the time that he released this song, he was supposed to be in a plane that ended up crashing with Travis Barker in it. He was supposed to be in that plane and he wasn't and multiple people died in that plane crash. And this kind of like made him reflect back on his life and look back on his career and realize what's important and what's not. So I really just love this from him. And I'm so glad I found this on a 12 inch. Um, but yeah, really cool for $1. I mean, you can't beat that. Next up, we have a very, very, very good concept album. And something that um, took a while to grow on me a little bit. Like I love some songs on this, but I didn't begin to appreciate this album as much until uh, I got a little bit older and I, kind of started deconstructing the album a little bit. And that is Damn by Kendrick Lamar. I know a lot of people have this in their collection and I see why. I mean, Kendrick Lamar is the best rapper skill wise and just poetically and lyrics wise that we have right now in our generation. And this thing is just crazy good. I love how there's like this um, trap feel to it, but it's also very deep. The album basically starts off with Kendrick Lamar getting shot and then playing out like his whole life that led him up to that moment. But then if you put it in reverse, the story is completely different. It's pretty much like if I lived my life this way perfectly, I could have still just been that perfect guy at that convenience store that I got shot at and still died. I, it's hard to explain it, but like he's, if you search YouTube videos on it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a really cool concept. And yeah, the, the packaging is really clean. It feels nice. Um, you got like the gloss finish right here. And then if you open it up, you got damn right there with all the song uh, credits on those sides. And the cool thing about this is that the vinyl is green. I don't know if you guys could tell. It's really hard to tell. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. It's like a weird green. It's like a dark green. Um, there we go. But yeah, super sick. Glad I own this. It's a Target exclusive. And yeah, I'll tell you my favorite songs in one second. So my favorite songs off of Damn by Kendrick Lamar would have to be DNA. Element is crazy. Love that song. Um, Loyalty by Rihanna hits so hard, bro. Humble, oh, Fear is crazy good. Feel, oh my God, bro, I skipped Feel. Uh, I think Alchemist produced that, crazy good song. One of my favorites off the album. Um, and Duckworth is incredible. Um, really good project, love this. Glad I own it. Next up, we have a bootleg of a very important artist in my life, and that is Mac Miller. 
and we have Macadelic. This album came out after a time period where Mac Miller had released um, Blue Slide Park and was heavily criticized about the album by critics and reviewers all over the world. And it really brought him into a dark place where he started experimenting with drugs to cope with his feelings. And he had a big shift in his career when he released this project. Things were a lot more real to him and he didn't want to face those. And you could tell in this project that he became more introspective. He started thinking about life more. He started thinking about his decisions, his choices, and it resulted in a really, really good body of work. I remember when this dropped, a lot of Mac Miller fans stopped liking his music. I literally remember people were like, oh, what is Mac Miller doing? Like, like what is this, what is this like depressing music he's releasing? I remember all of my friends saying that because they all knew him for kids, Blue Slide Park, best day ever. All of those Mac fans disappeared, bro. All those like fun, like only liking Mac Miller for his, his party music disappeared after he released this, bro. This was for like the real rap fans, but also the boy, like the sad boys. Like this was, I love this thing when it dropped. This made me a ginormous Mac Miller fan. Like I liked kids and I loved all that stuff. I loved kids, but I, you know, there's only so much fun music you can take. This was like, oh my God, this guy's entering a whole new, new world of music. And just great. I mean, songs like um, Desperado, Loud are all bangers. Fight the Feelings, Incredible with Kendrick Lamar. Oh my God, bro. Morning After, One Through Eight. Oh, so underrated, bro. Go listen to One Through Eight if you haven't. That song is incredible. So introspective for his age. Ignorance, A Slapper. The Question is one of my favorite songs of all time, bro. Um, Lil Wayne's best verse of all time. Don't quote me on that. But, I mean, actually, no, quote me on that, but don't at me on that. Because he snaps on that, bro. And I saw an interview where Mac Miller was like, all I wanted was to get Lil Wayne on a track and all I wanted for him to do was be chill Lil Wayne. Like the vibe of Lil Wayne where he's like not trying to spit too hard but he's just coasting on a track. And that is exactly what he does on this track. Mac Miller said he got the vocals in and he was like listening to the, the acapella version of Lil Wayne spitting and he said he was jumping like of like just happiness in his studio. Um, so I think that's a funny story. I saw that in an interview somewhere. But yeah, America with Joey Badass. I mean, there's some really good features on this and just great songs. Super underrated project, really high up in his uh, discography for me. Um, and yeah, it's a bootleg, but they did a really good job pressing this and it's just on black vinyl. But what a good, good album, man. And rest in peace to my guy. Next up, we have an album that wasn't really received by uh, many people as being that great as well um and i didn't really like it at first that much too but then i started listening to it more and it grew on me and i just think the artwork and everything about this is like they rolled this out pretty cool and that is jack boys by jack boys i don't know i just it's quick it's crisp it's it's hard hitting don toliver goes off on this like he does a great job throughout the whole project and i just I, it grew on me and like how do you not like this cover dude like look how sick that cover is um and the back is crazy like the whole like packaging to this is really cool but yeah don toliver does this thing i mean there's not enough um songs on this personally like i think there should be more songs on this thing not everyone gets to show their talents as much as they should like shaq west deserves some more time like just dudes that that like i mean it was just mostly a Don Toliver project with like some Travis features and stuff, but I really like it. I mean, this there's some bangers like Out West was huge on uh, TikTok, but like Gang Gang's Fire, Had Enough, um, What to Do is incredible, bro. That song is really good. Like looking back on this, this is a solid project for me. Um, Gotti, Pop Smoke goes crazy on that thing. Like Travis's verse grew on me too. Like people are like Travis can't go over a drill beat. Like bro, listen to that again. He's nice on that yeah super sick packaging um you have the sleeve right here um you have the credits and then we got that we got that neon look at that bro so sick this is an urban outfitters exclusive but yeah this is really sick to own i'm glad i have it Glad I picked it up and I don't really care what the haters have to say, this thing slaps. Another classic album, bro. This album is just so iconic and so important to hip hop. 
and it's just done a lot for a lot of artists uh, currently, and that is Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreaks. And yeah, man, what do I say? I say that like, this is just immaculate. I don't know, like it's really, it really is incredible. I remember when this dropped, it was very strange, very um, unique. A lot of people didn't like it, harshly criticized as well. And that's when the best, like the most criticized albums, dude, if they grow the right way, that's some of the most iconic and legendary albums of all time. Like, like I said with, um, what was the other album I was saying was harshly criticized. I forget what it was, but you just see that trend. Like albums that aren't received well at first and then are like huge later on are probably the most influential projects of the time period that it was released. Um, just because it tested the boundaries of the genre that it's in. And that's exactly what this project did. Kanye focused on melodies way more than any rapper has ever done on a project on this. He focused on like different production, synth, uh, 808 breaks. Like he did a lot of different things on this that gave like artists like Kid Cudi, Travis Scott, Post Malone, Drake, like everybody, man. Like all these huge names you have in uh, the hip hop industry, they all owe their, their careers to this project pretty much. Um, but yeah, songs like Say You Will, so simple, but like so hard hitting. Like that song's incredible, dude. I love Say You Will. Welcome to Heartbreak was Kid Cudi's like moment that he shined and got big off of. And that's pretty much jumpstart to Kid Cudi's career right there. We have Heartless. Uh, we all know that song. Amazing. Probably the best song off this thing. Um, Heartless is not amazing, but Amazing is also amazing. Um, love Lockdown was so strange when I first listened to it. I was like, what is happening? That was one of my favorite songs as a kid listening to this. I was in middle school when this released, so. Um, Street Lights, such a vibe. Um, really cool song when you're driving at night. Like it just hits different. Bad News is really good. Coldest Winter is about his mom and pretty much the whole thing's about his mom and passing of his mother and his loneliness and depression at the time. Um, and yeah, this, this album's crazy. The packaging on this vinyl is so sick. I'll show you guys that right now, so. It's a trifold, so let me open this up. Try and show you guys this one second. All right, here we go. So it's a trifold, and then in the trifold, there is a CD. So the CD is right there, pretty sick. The whole album's on that. Um, and then there is like a lot of stuff on the inside. So let me show you that too. It's pretty much like a box set, but not a box set. You know what I mean? It's crazy how much stuff is in here. So first we have like the credits. All on this one. And then give me a few seconds to put this back in. And then we have, um, a poster, double-sided poster. So on this side, we have Kanye West and his mom, since this album is dedicated to her, that's very fitting. And then we have this sick uh, poster of Kanye as well. But man, what a good album. I just love this thing. Great in the winter time, just hits different. And it's a classic. All right, last up, we have Delusional Thomas by Mac Miller, or I should say Delusional Thomas. Um, this is Mac Miller's um, alter ego. I say this is like his Quasimodo project. This was heavily influenced by Quasimodo. Um, and yeah, this thing's just sick. It has some of Mac Miller's best flow and bars in it um, that I've ever heard. It's all high pitched, so his voice is like scaled up a lot on the whole thing. And it's about him kind of just like testing. He wants to like rap about things that he normally wouldn't rap about. So he created this alter ego that's like a psychopathic murderer, killer, that like kills babies for fun and crap. Like he's just insane on this, honestly. This was at like one of the lowest points in his career in terms of what he was releasing. Like he was really dark and um, I kind of find some beauty in that in a weird way um, because this thing is filled with actually crazy lyrics 
and really good stuff. People don't really know about this. They don't really listen to it. And yeah, it's just really, it's psychotic, honestly, but it's really cool to see him in this phase and to understand Mac Miller's journey. You kind of need to listen to this stuff. Um, but it's just such a cool thing to own on vinyl. I saw this, I was like, I need to get that. Um, this is the back. Um, songs like Halo, Vertigo, uh, Libido, and Grandpa Used to Carry a Flask are all my favorite. Uh, Grandpa Used to Carry a Flask is sick um, because he goes out from his regular voice to like being uh, Delusional Thomas and then going back to his regular voice. So he's kind of coming in and out of this character. And yeah, just a really good project. Super weird, um, not well known, but if you're interested in something a little different from Mac Miller, uh, I suggest you go listen to this. If you don't mind the high pitched vocals and you kind of let it be the story that it is, then it's gonna be great. Like if you listen to Mad Lib and those types of guys, you're gonna love this album because it's all about the story and everything like that. So yeah, really good project. That's the last one I have today. I figured I'd, I'd end it on kind of like a rare, um, uncommon uh, vinyl. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm glad I got back into this and yeah. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.